So we'll see what we have going on this week. So today we're doing something called limiting reactant problems. Um, really the stoichiometry isn't new. They're pretty long. I'll go ahead and tell y'all that up front. They will not be on the test tomorrow. We'll have a quiz over those on um, Thursday. Quiz over limiting over learning today. That quiz will not be until Thursday. And that'll probably be the last quiz of our uh, of this six weeks. Um, test tomorrow, and then we'll continue on with percent yield. Uh, we'll have our Valentine's Day lab on Thursday, Friday. Y'all are here just for half a day. So you'll have an assignment. You actually have a sub that day. So, and then y'all are off on Monday. Uh, so we don't have the quiz. So when y'all come back on Tuesday, it'll be coming straight back to your six weeks test, which is just going to be over the stoichiometry unit. So the other unit that we did was equations, balancing what types, we're not gonna do all of that. So it's really just a unit test that you're gonna have next Tuesday. So uh, it'll add in the two things that we learned this week. Um, Ms. Lowry's World Famous Valentine's Day Lab. So the test on Tuesday is open note, so there will not be any retest. Um, you have a couple of day, couple of really, there's only one open requiz this week, the multi-mole ratio, which we did last week, although most people did really good on that. But uh, you could come in and requiz on that if you need to for tutorials or just come in and ask questions. Uh, my tutorials are listed up there at the top. Um, I have duty now on Monday, so I will have tutorials, but not till after 3.45. And um, anyway, the rest of them are listed up there. So anybody have any questions on any of that? All right. Then let us move on to the fun world of stoichiometry. All right. That's mine. So we're on our same set of notes. And we're going to move on to limiting reactant, also called limiting reagent problems. Um, it would be somewhere in that box, I, if you can remember back to what day we started on with the notes. Second. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Find them in the second. And if you don't see them in the second, look in the third, because I think my regular students start it one day later. So.
So I don't know if you want your little, if you like your little, what's that called? The little cheat sheet thing, you might want that out too. As I do these problems, I probably will move between working some following your units and then working some as if you're just following your laws, roadway or map or whatever it's called. So was anybody real into the Super Bowl last night? Huh? Yeah. So was anybody very, not really? It was rigged. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really get it. I didn't 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 get it. I
is manufactured for uses ranging from car brakes to bulletproof vests, best, according to the reaction below. And that is a balanced reaction. It says if I have 25 grams of carbon and 25 grams of silicon dioxide, so I've got 25 grams here and 25 grams there. What is the limiting reactant? How many grams of the silicon carbide will be produced theoretically? And then how many grams of the excess are left? So out of all of this, the only thing that we're not gonna use is carbon monoxide. So you have two givens and they're both reactants and they're given in grams. So this, these are going to be gram to gram problems because my given is in grams and I'm trying to figure out how many grams of silicon carbide. So I'm going to have to do two, two stoichiometry problems. One of my givens is 25 grams of carbon the other is 25 grams of silicon oxide. And I want to get to grams of SIC. All right, so this isn't anything new. We've been doing this. So I'm gonna start off if I'm grams of carbon here, I have to be grams of carbon down here. So that would be my molar mass of carbon, 12.01 grams per one mole. If I'm moles of carbon here, I have to be moles of carbon down here. Nothing about grams in this box. So this is my mole to mole ratio. So moles of carbon to moles of SIC. So carbon is three, SIC is one. And then moles of SIC, silicon carbide. But I see my grams, so I'd have to figure out the molar mass and it's 40.10 grams per one mole. So for this problem, I make sure my units cancel, multiply across like we've been doing, divide by what's on the bottom, and I get 27.8 grams of silicon carbide. So that's if all of my carbon is used up. Okay, but now we got to go and we got to do the same thing with my other reactant. So I have grams of silicon dioxide. So I'd have to use grams of silicon dioxide down here. So that would be its molar mass, which is 60.09 grams per one mole. Follow my units, moles of silicon dioxide, nothing about grams. So this is where I'm gonna do my mole ratio. So I have one mole of silicon dioxide for every one mole of silicon carbide. Now remember your unknown for both is silicon carbide. So starting right here, I'm just repeating my number. So in other words, I've already figured out this molar mass. So this is moles. So I have moles of silicon carbide here. Use the same molar mass I used up there. So 40.10 grams per one mole. All my units cancel. So I'm gonna multiply across, divide by my 60.09. And for this one, I get 16.7 grams of silicon carbide. So once you get your two answers, you're always going to choose your smaller one because that is how much is actually made of your product. So 16.7 grams silicon carbide made. And to figure out what your limiting reactant is, you go back and you see which of those two reactants started that problem. So 16.7 was my smallest answer. If I go back 
That was the answer for whenever I was using SiO2 as my reactant. So SiO2 is going to be my limiting reactant. All of that is going to be used up. So two stoichiometry problems, it doesn't always have to be four step. When you get your two answers, select your smallest one, and that is how much of the product is actually made. Go back to the beginning of that problem with the smallest answer and see which reactant was used for that particular problem. And that will be your limiting reactant. Sometimes people will do all this work and they'll leave these two answers. They won't box one in, they won't say, this is how much is actually made. You're not gonna get any credit for that because you haven't made that decision with those two answers. And if you've done all that work and gotten it correct, then that could be pretty frustrating. So that is what you do to figure out how much is actually made and what is your limiting reactant. Now, the next thing we're gonna see how many grams of the excess reactant is left. And this is the math that kind of causes some people some problems sometimes. So I'm gonna to have to get rid of this. All right. So now we know we're trying to figure out how many grams of our excess reactant is left. So now we know that our excess reactant is carbon. Because we already said the other one was silicon dioxide. So that becomes our unknown. The excess reactant becomes the unknown. Your known becomes how many grams of the product were actually made. 16.7 grams of silicon carbide were actually made. That's what we got from our stoichiometry problem. So now I have to figure out if 16.7 grams of silicon carbide is made, how many grams of carbon does that actually take? I know it has to be less than 25 because we said carbon is in excess. So that's my first step. I'm gonna start with my 16.7 grams of silicon carbide. That's my known. In my unknown, I need to figure out how many grams of my excess reactant that actually took. Now I erased my work because that's what I had to do on my iPad, but y'all have all your work. So when you do this last stoichiometry problem, you should have all the molar masses that you need. You would have used them previously. So you shouldn't have to do any more of those calculations. So it goes a little bit quicker. So if I'm grams of silicon carbide here, then I have to be grams of silicon carbide down here. And we did the molar mass and we said it was 40. 1.0 grams per one mole. And that's of silicon carbide. So if I'm moles of silicon carbide here, then I need the mole to mole ratio of my known to my unknown. So silicon carbide is one and carbon is three. And then moles of carbon here, I have to have moles of carbon down here, 12.01 grams per one mole. Multiply across. I got to go get 15.0. Okay, grams of carbon used. And then. So this is 15 grams of carbon was used to make that silicon carbide, but we're asking how much is left. I started with 25 grams.
I used 15 grams. So my excess will be 10 grams excess. So that is your answer to this last question. How many grams of the excess? So you have to remember here it worked out fine. I started with three sig figs. I ended with three sig figs. But you have to remember when y'all when you subtract and add, it's places behind the decimal. So we'll do it another example or as you do your practice, it's not going to be counting sig figs for this last step. You're looking at places behind the decimal. So like I said, out of everything, this little step right here is kind of what causes the most problem with students. Does anybody have any questions about where we got any of those numbers? All righty. All right, so like I said, nothing really new, just really long. Let us find, uh, we'll just go to the next one and do another example here. We'll just go to our next one. All right, and I think this one does need to be balanced and actually needs to be rewritten. And so then when you balance it, you need a 16 here and an here. So it says, what is the maximum amount mass of copper sulfide? So that's my unknown in grams. It has to be my unknown because I only have one product. When 80 grams of copper reacts with 25 grams of sulfur. So once again, you could tell it's limiting reactant because I have two givens and they're both reactants. So I'm gonna have to do two problems. So one of mine givens is gonna be 80 grams of copper and the other given is gonna be 25 grams of sulfur. So I'm gonna start with my 25 grams of sulfur. And I'm going to do this one like you were using your little, um, whatever that's called. I just keep on calling that a little cheat sheet. So I start with my given in grams, put it over one. And then my first conversion factor in the box is one over the molar mass. So since it's sulfur and there's eight of them, I'd have to take eight sulfur, and you would get 256.8. Five, six grams. And then my next conversion factor is the one that always has to be used, the mole to mole ratio. So I do moles of my known, which is one over moles of my, my sorry, on the bottom and moles of my unknown at the top, which is eight. And then I finish with my last conversion factor, the molar mass of my unknown, which is 159.17 grams over one. So you can see I didn't really worry that much about my units. Multiply across and then divide, in this case, just by 256.56. And I got 124 grams of copper sulfide. Remember this and this are just molar masses and this is my mole to mole ratio. You have to use mole to mole ratio in every case, every problem.
All right, and then I'm gonna do my other one. I'm gonna start with 80 grams of copper. Over one. And copper just straight off the periodic table. So I'm gonna do one over its molar mass. Next step would be mole to mole ratio. So I have 16 moles of copper for every eight moles of my unknown, of my product. And then my last conversion factor is my molar mass of my unknown, which I've already used right here. 159.17 grams over one. All right, so did all the work and now it's just putting it in the calculator. So 80 times eight times 159.17. And then remember, if you're gonna do this together on the bottom, you probably need to put it in parentheses. I got 100 grams. Anybody else get 100 grams? Yes, all right. And I put the decimal at the back of that 100 because I need it to be three sig figs. So there are my two answers. So how much copper sulfide was actually produced? Exactly. 100 grams is how much was actually produced. So that makes which reactant my limiting reactant. that 80 grams came from 80 grams of copper. So which would be my limiting reactant, my copper or my sulfur? Yeah, it has, remember, pick your lowest number like y'all did and go back and see what started that one. And that 80 grams started with the copper. So that means my limiting reactant is my copper. So once you've done all that work with two stoichiometry problems, your first set of information all gonna come from that one stoichiometry problem that had the lowest amount of product. That's where you're gonna get how much product was actually produced. And then that's also where you're gonna get what the limiting reactant was, because it would be what started that product problem. All right, so now let's do the other test. It doesn't ask for it, but it's just good practice because like I said, that's kind of the part that everybody has a little bit of trouble with. Um, we're not gonna do number three. So if you wanna skip down and show your work on number three, that'll work. Not in here, we're not gonna do number three. So if you wanna do your excess, Make yourself a note that this is how we're going to find our excess for number one. All right, we said copper was our limiting reactant. So that means that we know our excess reactant is sulfur. So that's my unknown. And my known is going to be how much of my product was actually made. So that's 100 grams of C2S, copper sulfide, copper two sulfide, copper one sulfide, sorry. Because what we're trying to figure here, because it says that we started with 25 grams of sulfur. We know we didn't use all of that. We we're trying to figure out how much did we use to make that 100 grams. So we're gonna start with our given. And remember, you should not have to figure any new molar masses when you get to this step. It would have been any molar mass that you've already used. And we need to figure out how many 
grams of sulfur. Actually, it's a So grams of copper sulfide here. So I'd have to have the molar mass of copper sulfide down here, which is 159.17 grams per one mole. Moles of copper sulfide down here. So I don't see anything about grams in that box. So this is my mole to mole ratio. So I had eight moles of copper sulfide for every one mole of sulfur. And then I follow my units, moles of sulfur down here. I do see a gram. So this is where I'd have to figure out the molar, or I would have already figured the molar mass of sulfur. I have eight sulfur atoms. So it's 256. 0.56 grams per one mole. All right, we did all of the hard work. So I'm going to multiply across 100 times 256.56 divide by 159.17 times 8. And I got 20.1. Anybody else get 20.1? So that's how many grams of sulfur was used. We had to use that many grams to get this 100 grams. So what we're asking for is our excess. So I started with 25 grams. Your, what you started with is always going to come from your word problem. I'm going to subtract how much I actually used. 25.0 minus 20.1 will give me 4.9 grams left. And that would be your answer. 4.9 is not three sick figs, but remember on this last step, we're looking at places behind the decimal. This both had one place behind the decimal, so my answer should have one place behind the decimal. So that would be my correct answer. A lot of work. Does anybody have any, any questions where that came from? Okay, why don't y'all try number two? Now, look at number two. It's going to be a lot shorter because what are we dealing with with number two? Only moles, right? So you're not going to be using any molar masses. But you can still do the same thing. So you're going to have to write yourself a, a, an equation. Also, go ahead and try to find out the excess. It'll be in moles, but that's fine.
So your first thing here is you have to be sure and write yourself out the equation. And tomorrow there, there are several that you have to write the equation on. And we're just going to mold to mold. So these are just like at the beginning, just two little two steps. So how many moles of water did you end up finding out was made? Nobody? This one gave me 30, right? 15, so it's always a smaller amount. Always a smaller amount. So 15 moles of water were made. And so what would be my limiting reactant? Hydrogen, perfect. Remember, these are not on the test tomorrow. And then to find out the excess, and we can do it in moles, start with my given of how much was actually made, which was 15 moles of water. And we want to know how many moles of my excess, which was moles of oxygen that took. So this is two moles of water over one. So it actually took 7.5 moles of oxygen. So we started with 15. That always comes from my problem. It took 7.5 moles. So 15 minus 7.5, and you have to notice that 15 is no places behind the decimal. So when I get my answer, 7.5 is what we get, but because of this 15 and there's no places behind the decimal, then my answer is at eight moles. Remember when you come to adding and subtracting, you're not counting sig figs, you're looking at places behind the decimal. So that means we should have eight moles of oxygen left, which is not a real practical way. Grams is much more practical, but moles are sure a lot shorter. All right, so y'all have practice on that. You'll have to do on your own because we will be moving on after the test to percent yield, which is not as long as this. If you would just like to come in for tutorials and work on stuff and ask me questions, please feel free to. I will be here after school. And I'll be here in the, not till I have duty, 345, but then I'll be here. And I'll be here in the morning if you want to come in for a quick question.